Eh. Eh. What's wrong, my guy? You seem down. You're out there shooting and doesn't seem like you're having any fun at all. Yeah, man, I don't know what it is, but coming out here and just shooting pellets and slugs and talking to myself in the woods, it just uh, doesn't have the same ring it used to. Maybe I'm just getting old. You're not getting old, my friend. You're just getting bored with the same old, same old. You gotta diversify. That's why I brought these. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Rugged Adventures. Boy, did that intro take way longer than I thought. I've been kind of bored shooting pellets and shooting slugs and stuff. So I went on the internet and I found some exotic shotgun shells. And what we're gonna look at today, we're gonna look at these piranha shells. We're gonna look at some fleche shells. I have Mucho Gaucho Bolo shells, and we have some armor piercing shells. Now the important thing to note here for whoever reviews this on my YouTube in is that none of this is homemade because you can't do any of that on uh, the YouTube channel. It's all bought from the store. I'm not gonna say where it's from, but it's pretty easy to find it on the internet if you want. Today we're gonna be using the Panzer BP-12. You know, I've kind of really fallen for this thing, even though today it, it has given me a lot of jams. I don't know if it's just one particular magazine or if it's still because it's just a little bit cold out. I haven't warmed it up, I'm not sure. But uh, let's get started here with these uh, piranha rounds. We're going to go down the range, set up some targets, and see what each one of these does. See if they're any fun because I want to show you guys uh, because these are really expensive uh, and if you're gonna you know thinking about buying these each one of these shells with shipping and everything was probably over ten dollars a piece so watch this on the internet uh, like and subscribe down below to help me keep buying crap like this so that you can watch it and you don't have to spend you know 30 bucks for three shells first up we have the piranha ones like I was talking about these claim to be packed with steel nails in a uh, 12 gauge cartridge, a two and three quarter 12 gauge cartridge. Almost every one of these says that it is uh, powered by a really hot charge, and so we'll see if that's able to cycle this. What I've heard with this one is it's sort of like filled with um, like carpet tacks, like you would find in the tack strips. We're gonna let loose a couple of these. I'm gonna put one into our target, and then one just into the backstop there. See if we can pick some of these out and uh, give them a look. But let's uh, let's get on with it. Here we go with piranhas. First one into the target. Looks like it worked pretty good. I think it cycled the gun. One in the backstop. 20 bucks right there. And yeah, guys, these things are gnarly. You can see that's one of the little ones sticking out there. And I'm going to have to be real careful when I handle this thing. Looks like I kind of shot uh, right here. Looks like it hit here and just you can see all of the uh, the burnout marks there and the in the claw marks from where those tacks were going in hit the bottom here that would not be you know they say they're for home defense and such that would not be a happy camper um after getting hit by that if we go back here to our backstop you can see that there it's just riddled with these things and i tried i can probably pull one one of these out here oh i lost it there it is and it is just like a little tack it's like a little nail type of thing and those are, you know, come flying out of the uh, out of the shotgun, and however fast they're going, I don't know. But uh, we will get started next with the flashes. But first, I want to talk about a uh, a real problem in the community here. This is another empty mag, and there are firearms going hungry all over the world right now. That is why, for your donation of one like and one subscribe. During our subathon, we can hopefully feed this gun and maybe tens or hundreds of other guns like it. So if you guys would, please be generous. Please be generous with your likes, with your subscribes, with your sharings, and so that we can get all of these guns in the world fed. Now get out of here, Sarah McLaughlin. Our second exotic shotgun shell is something called a fleche round or flesh it or fleche. I don't know. What I've heard from the internet is that uh, it is French for millions of death darts flying out of the end of this shotgun. And from what the package says, they say they used it in Vietnam to flush out snipers. It really is like probably hundreds of metal darts coming out of this thing that are kind of unaffected by uh, trees and grass and such. And if you're in like dense woods like this, you know, if someone was up in a tree, it might deflect other types of shells. This is supposed to cut through that and get right to the point. It's supposed to be 2,000 feet per second. We'll see what it does. I, I want to say that that probably didn't eject. That didn't sound like it had that much of a pop to it. 
We'll hit one right here on the uh, backstop. And see what happened. It didn't cycle, and this one didn't cycle either. I just don't think that there's that much juice behind this round. These things are gnarly. Like, they don't have a lot of kick, they don't have a lot of punch, but look at these things. Look at the, these are like little arrows. I didn't I know what they looked like. I thought that they would be kind of smaller. Look at that thing. That is the flashé round. It's like a little uh, steel missile that comes out, and it's stuck all over in these things. It didn't do like a ton of damage to our target. There's one sticking out. Look at that thing. That's nasty. I mean, that is nasty. You do not want to get hit by that. It's probably not going to kill you unless it hits you right, like you know, in the heart or the head or something. But man, you're going to be uncomfortable as can be. Look at the back of this thing. We've got like little nails popping through all over the place. Where's another one? Right there. There's there's another one. That is nuts. Uh, so although that didn't have a ton of pop, that is a gnarly round. Not something that you're going to want to tangle with. And uh, I, that's that's wild. Next up, guys, we have the bolo round. And the kind of hook of this is, if you guys can see in there, I hope it focuses on it, there are two steel balls in there. And in between those steel balls is a stainless steel cable. So it's supposed to come out of this thing and kind of whip around. Now, if you, you know, kind of know how physics works, they're probably all just gonna stay kind of bunched up as it flies through the air until it hits the first thing that it hits. And then it'll probably whip around after that. So we're gonna try one here. And I might try to find some place that has some tall grasses or something, see if it'll just rip right through the grass. But let's give this a shot. Here we go. That did a pretty good job. We'll see if we'll be able to find any of the uh, pieces of it. So I may be mistaken about it not coming apart. It pretty much sliced that dude right in half, and I don't really know where the other parts of the uh, pineapple are. I was not able to find the actual, the, the bolo round, the balls and the string, but what I was able to find when I looked behind the target it went ahead and sliced right through. There's one of them, there's the other, there's the string in the middle, and it looks, I don't think that that string went all the way through, so it looks like it snapped, and I assume that the two balls that were on it continued to, you know, down the hill here somewhere. So likely won't find those. So the fourth thing that we have today is armor piercing 12 gauge shells. And what that is, is it has a stainless steel like penetrator type of thing in it. Uh, it says from here that it uh, should go through a quarter inch steel, any sort of car doors or sides, which we may, we may visit in the future. Uh, and it says that it has an extra hot load. So we're gonna see what it, what it does. I've kind of changed up the targets. I don't think that a pineapple is gonna resist this at all. So we're gonna start with a piece of firewood. I think that that's ash that's been killed from the emerald ash borer, but we will see what that does. Let's see if I can even hit it. Nice, nailed it. Let's take a look at what it did. Well, we definitely hit it, which was, you know, great whenever I could hit the target and manage to really get it right in the center. That is about all that it did. I am actually kind of a little disappointed with this. I was hoping that it would split the log or go through the back or do something that was really cool, but it's kind of anticlimactic. So the next one that we'll do is we'll shoot it here at this quarter inch plate. This is what I call like my UFO target because I'm not sure what it's made out of. It's backed in Kevlar. And the only thing that's even been able to do anything to it is this 300 wind mag here. Everything else has barely scratched the surface. So once we get this thing unjammed, because the shell managed to jam in the barrel, we'll uh, try again. All right, we're gonna try hitting, like I said, our UFO armor. It is kind of at an angle and it will probably fall down, but I really don't want this chunk of metal coming directly back at me if we had like the best shot directly perpendicular to it. Not interested in that today. So, here we go. I hit pretty darn hard. Let's see if this thing ejected this time. It didn't eject, but it didn't get jammed. I'm not actually sure what happened with the last one, but the only thing that I can think of is that this part of the casing right here, the, uh, the end of the brass, must have swelled up when it went off and kind of got stuck in the breech. So, See what happened with our UFO target down here. I 
absolutely nothing. That looks like where it hit. It didn't, it's not even bowed. I mean, maybe just a little bit. Didn't do a thing. Now, granted, this isn't like, you know, quarter inch, uh, regular steel, regular carbon steel. I want to say that this is at least AR500 with this Kevlar backing on there. So it may not be a fair test, but it didn't even come close to doing any damage to that thing. So I have one more target and it's a bit softer target that I think that this armor piercing may be cool to look at. So let's get up there. So we've got this old lawnmower up here. It's been defunct for a long time. Used to sit right where the camera's sitting right now. We drug it off the road with uh, with a razor or something. And you know, it's cast metal, you know, just crappy old like Briggs and Stratton engine. Nothing special. We're gonna use the same type of ammo that we used on the other two targets. See if we get any better damage with this. And we definitely hit it. Let's see what we did. All right, so it went in right there. You can probably still see smoke wafting out of it. It uh, it went in. I can't see where else it, it went to in the engine. It definitely did not come out anywhere as far as I can see. So it went in there and rattled around. And you know, those other rounds were really cool. I thought the flashes, I thought the piranhas were pretty neat, probably worth the money. The bolo rounds are, are unique and we'll try to find a, a grassy time in the summertime. It's the end of March or the beginning of March, so there's not much grass around. Those ones I think were probably worth it. The armor piercing one, I'm not terribly you know impressed by. I think the biggest problem with it is that there's just not enough room in a two and three quarter shell to put that armor piercing round, put a wad in there and also put enough propellant so that it can, you know, go fast enough to really do significant damage. And then if you could even do all that, can a typical 12 gauge shotgun hold up to that pressure? I honestly do not know. But if you guys want to see more cool stuff like this in the future, be sure to subscribe to this channel, hit the like button down below, click on these videos. There's other stuff that we've been uh, shooting at that we've been blowing up. Be sure if you guys care at all about feeding these hungry guns to uh, subscribe to the subscribe-a-thon be generous with your donations guys these guns can't feed themselves there is a poor starving gun probably in everyone's basement I appreciate you guys watching today and I'll see you in the next one and here's a little sneak peek on what's coming oh yeah Stay tuned.